What's up, you guys? It is Nick and Christian at the You Need a Horror Podcast. Hey now, as Christian would say, <laughs> how's everybody doing? We are here today. We are joined by a, a man that directed a film that we're all very much looking forward to, Timo Vorensola. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing very good. Thank you very much. It's a nice uh, evening here in Helsinki, Finland, and uh, uh, yeah, enjoying Sunday night. That's That's what I'm doing. How about yes, you, guys? You, you guys? You guys are there? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Christian? Good. Yeah, I'm doing good. So, Timo, you're basically in the future because it's 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 morning for a Sunday here, yeah. and this, I gotta yeah. I've got to start this interview. I mean, you you, you're not going to miss anything of the day. I mean, I I I already lived the day up to the evening, and I can mm -hmm. tell you, it's not that much of a special <laughs> day. Yeah. Very special is going to happen, so you'll be fine at least for the day. Timo, you said you're for, you're in Helsinki, Finland. I know this is already starting this interview off at the most random thing, but I have to ask. One of my all-time favorite bands growing up was Him, and that oh, yeah. they were from Helsinki. Are you? I'm, I'm, you have to. Uh, how big are was that band over there? Were they like the Beatles over there? Well, yeah. I mean, it was massive. Obviously, uh, Him was was uh, I think one of the very first, if not even almost the first band that ever got any, any kind of international uh, uh, sort of attention and it actually got very big back in the I think like early to mid 90s it was it was sort of their heyday and yeah it was it was huge and it still is I mean I mean the <clears throat> singer Villa Valo is, is uh, uh, you know doing quite a lot of music nowadays on different kind of company you know bands and whatever stuff so they they still are but back in those days back in the like I said, mid nineties to maybe it was late nineties. It was huge. It was really big. Thank. Okay, that's so cool to hear. I've I've never I never thought I'd be able to actually ask somebody from that homeland of that band what it was like. But that yeah. I was a I'm so I was so bummed out when they stopped playing. But like yeah, that's yeah. that's cool, man. That is really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, but the, it, it was it meant meant a huge deal. I mean, there was a couple of bands that have gotten from Finland to international fame, which is him. Obviously, there's another one called Nightwish. Uh, before that, there was something called Hanoi Rocks, which was uh, I know them, the, yeah, in the eighties. But outside of that, it hasn't been that many. It's it's uh, it's quite a rare thing that Finnish band makes it international. So we are very proud of them. Let's get this thing going, man. I, I gotta ask you, like, how this directing thing, making films. How, how does somebody, especially from Finland, how it seems like it's like you guys are so far away, and I like, think the world of movies is 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 start is like. The Los Angeles thing, it's being in America. How how do you how do you get into this thing? Especially being over there. I mean, you gotta grow up being you gotta you gotta grow up wanting to do this kind of thing, right? I guess so, yeah. And it, it's like uh, like I, I think the big big question here is is what kind of movies you wanna be making. Because obviously we've had a Finnish film industry, it's a hundred plus year old industry which is producing, you know, thirty to 40 films every year for Finnish audiences. Uh, very few Finnish filmmakers sort of want to start doing uh, films for international audiences, which is something that I've sort of focused by my life on. And that obviously is much kind of a harder and rockier road in, in a sense, because you, you have to really reach the gap from Helsinki to Los Angeles uh, one way or another, so to say, because obviously all of the films that that I grew up with watching and sort of admiring and wanting to do, they were American films. They were American films from the 80s and 90s. Especially that stuff is something that I grew up watching. And obviously nobody in Finland was doing anything like that. I mean, our our typical movies are, you know, you know, different movies. It's uh, they, they are dramas. They are uh, Finnish dramas. They take place in the summer. Somebody falls in love with somebody. There's there's a little drama and trouble and 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 that's that's the kind of stories that we used to do here, but I wanted to do horror films. I wanted to do sci-fi films. I wanted to do fantasy movies, all of that stuff. And uh, and like I said, nobody was doing that kind of stuff here. So I had to find my way around that that fact differently. And that's the reason I started to do these sort of rather crazy uh concept movies which which is like nazis on the moon and stuff like that which was so crazy that it got some international attention because of the craziness of the topic and i know that it's also something that 
uh, not a lot of American filmmakers could do lot, uh, especially right off the bat. It's like Nazis on the Moon is is, is such a uh, you know touchy topic that you need to approach it with a certain kind of sensibilities to be able to do that. And I, I think uh, as a Finnish filmmaker, I was able to find the the right kind of way to approach this touchy topic in a way that it is still respectful, but also you know crazy enough to find find its its legs so i guess that's that's really the whole case is it's really that you have to find a way to somehow make your international mark uh with a crazy enough concept in order to make any kind of chance to make anything international i would say yeah and and you know timo it's it's interesting that you mentioned the idea of you know nazis on the moon and stuff like that and how it is a touchy subject and but for horror fans, we attach ourselves to those kind of ideas That's because true. like, yeah, we have so many horror movies that we love that the general audience would say, this is, what is that? But we, we yeah. just love those types of things. So I feel like it found a home with people like us. And it's interesting because I wanted to ask you about Iron Sky to really start off with. I had a question. We had some questions come in from some people. And um, our first question was from one our buddy Marcel. And he wanted to know, did you expect, like, I know you go into things open-minded, you know, you're making it, you don't know how it's going to be received. You're just doing it because you have a passion for it. But did you expect Iron Sky to get the cult following that it did? Because even in the States, like, that's a movie that, you know, especially horror fans are aware of. They're aware of its existence. It's harder to get physical copies of it over here. But did you expect that to kind of take off a little bit? Because it, it did. It did. Uh, I didn't expect it at all. I mean, I, I knew it's... Uh, uh, I kind of expected that it's probably get some sort of internet fame around it. But that's all I sort of thought it was going to do. And, and and obviously I still... And I didn't even think about it so much because I think the whole concept was such a, such a big thing to realize because we wanted to make it very special, very very unique. Uh, and, and I had a very clear idea of how it's going to look like visually, how it's going to sound like, how it's going to play like as a movie. So I didn't really worry about or think about too much like how it's how it's going to you know be uh, accepted or noticed by by the people and where uh, until at the premiere. And then I was like, oh shit, now I actually they like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like now this film is out, and actually now it needs to start performing. <laughs> that, that's the question it's like and i have absolutely no idea how how it's going to perform and where it's going to perform i knew that we had a nice premiere at berlin film festival in 2012 which was mm -hmm. a fantastic very nice premiere a lot of people over there and people liked it a lot but that still doesn't tell you basically anything in the festival audience it's a little bit different audience than the general audience but when we started to see how it started to pop up all over the world it was like Wow! Suddenly, there are people from China who like this movie, from America, from you know, from South America somewhere, you know, all the all, all these places. And I was, I was really like, I think we all were like, this is, it's going going quite crazy. Yeah. You know, Timo, let me. You, you said something. I'd love to pick your brain about this because I've never heard this said before, but I I think I can almost understand what you mean. You said the festival audience is different from the general audience. Mm -hmm. Explain what you mean by that, because that's a fascinating statement to me. I think it's very, uh, and it's, it's very clear because festival audience is, is, is an enthusiastic audience who appreciate movies. They appreciate, and also if they like something, they are willing to forgive some stuff in a movie because they are there they they are there to enjoy the enjoy the movies not just the movies but also the general vibe of the festival and and all of this sort of builds together so you can you can win the audience to your side uh on a, on a different level but when it goes out really out into the wild when it goes into the movie theater uh you know next to you where people just walk by they see oh, i think i think there was a little bit of a internet hiccup so yeah if you see uh, the, the, the general audience is, is they are much less forgiving. Like they need to be entertained just with the movie. There's nothing to help you out. I mean, I mean, there's no people are not gonna go to the theater having a few beers, having seen ten horror movies, 
before or you know fun movies before they have a certain vibe no they're gonna go there after a working day they're gonna be expecting to be entertained for the next two hours and there's nothing that's gonna help you so in that sense that that audience is more demanding i mean at the same time of course festival audience is demanding in its own sort of way but general audience you just need to entertain them and you need to do it in the right way because if it's too complicated, if it's too something, they will not be happy. And that's that's always not not a good thing. Well, I would say that you achieve that goal because there was quite a groundswell for years after Iron Sky for a sequel. You know, a lot of people wanted to see a sequel. And then in 2019, you guys did put out a sequel, mm -hmm. which um Obviously, you guys had more to work with. There was a bigger budget. It was a bigger scale movie. And it really shows that that's one thing that I wanted to say. Even the first movie, I think the special effects are highly underrated in that because that was a lot more contained, but it did it doesn't feel contained. It looks very good for what you guys had to work with. The second mm -hmm. one was really more of this big budget adventure fantasy kind of action movie like you were talking about. How was approaching the sequel then now that you know that this first one had a fan base and you had more to work with was it a lot more fun to come back and just kind of throw everything at the wall kind of yeah but at the same time there was something about the the, the the contained nature of the first one and sort of the sort of the very strict limitations of the first one which drove us to focus maybe more with with the second one it got a little bit all over the place because we had a chance to put it all over the place and kind of I, I sort of wanted it to be like that. I wanted it to be like like crazy Indiana Jones kind of thing. But at the same time, I think I think it got a little a little out of hand in a way that that there was too many things and now there was there was no like no you know the the, the framework of references was so wide that suddenly I could do anything I wanted there that I thought to be hilarious or fun in one way or another and uh and yeah it's just it, it tends to, i mean doing a sequel is, is a very tricky business and, and actually that's something that i only realized later on it's like doing a sequel <clears throat> you need to do it actually you can't deviate too much from the original material because if you do that you're almost in introducing an entire new movie in a sense uh, which may not be, um, which may not exactly be the best possible way. So I find myself uh, sort of enjoying the process of doing the second Iron Sky, but at the same time, I felt like uh, it was very easily getting getting out of hands in different places and, and in different ways, and and not always in the right way. Well, I think there's a lot of truth to you know proof to what you're saying there you know we're horror fans obviously and and there's a long list of directors that have said they like these smaller scale more contained <laughs> movies i mean one of the guys i think of first is john carpenter you know you think mm -hmm. of guys like wes craven toby hooper that really seem to work better almost it seems like the less money they have and and the, think, and the smaller but, cast they have yeah i think it's 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 not untrue uh, when they say that uh, the limitations are the best news uh, i think that's that's in many cases is because it keeps your focus sort of razor sharp if you have only only a sh short amount of time or small amount of resources you need you know th then you need to make sure that that time and th these resources are used in the most specifically uh, uh, you know, you know the, the the best way to get the best bang for the buck, uh, and and that sort of that that just makes you really focus on the story, and and the elements that make you what that you really want on the screen. When you have a little bit more, then you're sort of like trying to please all the possible <laughs> ideas that you have in your head, and it's not always it's not always good. And yeah, I mean, horror is a very good example of. Of the world, I mean, horror and sci-fi also tend to have both both uh, uh, the the second film or the sequel pitfalls that that uh, that happen many times, uh, but um, and sometimes they are really well handled. Like some some sometimes it's just something that's very very uh, well dealt with. But but in many cases also the sequels just fall very short, 
short from the original one and then you know maybe the third one or fourth one or something like that picks it up again but yeah well i wanted to say really quick we're going to get into jeepers creepers uh and and i we want to pick your brain a little bit about that but i just wanted to point out i think it was really cool to see udo kier in your two iron sky movies because as you can see i have rob zombie's halloween's poster right there he's in that film and I i love his character in that film even though he doesn't get much how was it to work with udo well udo became a very close friend already from the first iron sky i had a uh a uh, very clear idea when we were <laughs> devising the idea of Iron Sky. We were sitting in a sauna, and uh, a friend of mine said that that I have this crazy idea that we should do a m- movie about Nazis on the moon. And we were <laughs> all laughing. Like, That's a fucking awesome idea. Yeah. But and I said, yeah, yeah, let's get you know we gotta get like I don't know Udo Kier to play fucking Adolf Hitler or something like that. We didn't have anything any bits and pieces of the story in, in, in the head. But Udo Kier was right from the very beginning, like the idea that I'd love to work with him. And then eventually, um, after chasing down his agent and, and then, you know, finding a way for him to read the script, eventually, you know, years later, uh, he did respond. He, he actually called me and he said, he said, hello, Timo, this is Udo. I read your script. <laughs> it is... What I how how are the Nazis on the moon? Oh, <laughs> very nice. I like it. I want to play in it. So <laughs> then, that's awesome. He that's a good impersonation. He know? has he has done some movies, man. Uh, I, I didn't realize he, he was in Blood for Dracula. I love that movie. Uh, yeah, I, that's true. He, he's definitely there. At Flesh for Frankenstein, and then. Uh, I mean, he's done so many, and so, such a such a variety. Not all of them are great, but some of the stuff is amazing. And especially in his later years, I think he's he's found that he just released this new movie called Swan Song, which is a, it's a drama, but it's it's getting a that. lot of uh, yeah, it's getting very good reviews and everything. So it's it's like a it's like one of the one of the actors who's sort of been around forever, especially for the horror audiences and 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 stuff. It's it's he's very known. So I was very happy to work with him, and with the sequel, I was very happy to be able to play. Actually, uh, he plays a double role, so he gets much more screen time. And it's he's just a dream to work with because he's such a professional, yeah. uh, so experienced, and uh, he brings with him like a, a sunshine to the set. Like, no matter how complicated day it is, when Udo comes in. In his, <laughs> in our cases, in his Nazi uniform, sits next to me. It's like, Timo, 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 take it easy, take it easy. It's just <laughs> a movie. It's just a movie. Okay, let's go. And then yeah. <laughs> that's it. His, uh, you know, you say something that I have a question for you. Look, I don't get to talk to directors every day, much less legitimate, real like directors, right? I'm. I need to pick your brain for a second on this, Timo. Talk to me about. What like being a director on a movie set? You got people around you; they they're looking at you. Like the director is in charge of everything, right? Like, talk to me about that. How how do you deal? Like, I'm trying to I tr- I I can't really understand because I can't put myself in that that situation. Like, what are the pressures of being a director? Like everybody's everybody's looking at you for answers, right? Like, what is it like for somebody that wants to try to understand it's can't all be sunshine and rainbows no no it definitely is not and, and it's it's really the pressures of 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 being a director is, is especially the fact that you need to have an answer to basically everything but when you have a good film crew uh a director is insulated from from a lot of the things which allows you still the the brain space because as as a director your job is in the end your job is to show up, talk to the actors, make sure that they know what they're doing, and make sure that the camera camera knows what they're doing, and everything else should have been already discussed or decided along the way. Now, of course, this is never the case. So every day it's it's a million and million and one questions, and sometimes you feel like your only job is to sit there and answer people questions that you already probably answered many times. But it's it's I I remember it in the beginning when i started to it was actually it was very stressful and uh, and i didn't actually enjoy that so much but i started to the more and more i start to do these movies and 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 finish these movies and and uh it just i realized that that you just have to sort of 
always be friendly and always be uh, as as cool as possible because there's no reason on getting getting riled up about anything. And I mean, one of the important things is like you have to transfer your energy to the crew because you can't answer all the questions, but you can transfer the energy that you you have inside of you to the crew so that the crew will grab that energy and with that energy they will do decisions make make calls get a feeling of what you like what you don't like and and sort of work as a as 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 a whole big family instead of like me deciding everything for everybody but actually you have great professionals and if you're able to share that energy and sort of that I hate to use the word vision but let's call it call it the vision for now if you if you inspire them with that vision then it's it's less stressful for you as a director because they will want to do what you want and 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 they know already sort of they have freed your mind uh but it depends so much i mean uh, the other thing which i noticed that every film is a completely different animal there's no two films that are alike uh and and they are like 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 completely different animal it's not like you even if you everything goes well with this film, the next film can be just a you know a, a horrible experience, and then the next film can be another nice one and all that. So it, it's not there's no like like there's no way of preparing it until you come to the first shooting day and see okay this is the this is the vibe of the set, this is the vibe of the crew, these are the issues, these are the strengths, and these are the weaknesses, and then you just start to play with those as a director, I guess. Hopefully you'll you'll find your way somewhere during the shoot, like how how to operate with this 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 crew and cast. Yeah, because you know I always wondered like when you dealing with a crew and cast and actors, like I always uh, assumed like you as a director, you could look at it one or two ways. You could make everybody, you know, you could like I, I hear about these directors that are. I mean, back in the day, we talk about the William Freakins grabbing actors, dragging them, shooting guns behind them to get a reaction. Mm -hmm. Like, there's one way to do this, but like, do you almost have to like start to learn everybody's personalities, see what makes them tick, see what doesn't, and just have to try to be like everybody's. I, I shouldn't. I don't know if best friend is the word, but just you have to learn how to adapt to all these human beings around you and learn, okay, I need to approach this person this way. I need to talk to this person. Is that something you have to just, your wheels are always spinning? Like, okay, I got to understand how this person works. I got to understand how this person works so I can get everybody to come together. Or mm -hmm. is is it that, or is it is it not even that complicated? Is it just, just treat exactly. these it's, people with respect? You know? I think it's really, uh, it depends so much. And I think that, that, that yeah, definitely that there are those uh, uh, directors who are more, well, they have a, a little bit more brutal approach to directing than 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 I like. I, I prefer it to be exactly like you said. Like you you learn you learn to work. You you learn each individual. Of course, you can't learn everyone. You have two hundred people in the crew, but you can, especially with the cast, you learn each and every uh, cast member works a little bit differently. And then your job is to. Um, inspire all of them to put their you know bring their a game one way or another that that depends so much on what the what the some some actors want so much directions they are like tell me what to do where to sit down what to say where to look other direct uh, other actors are, are are just you know they don't want anything they they just and then it's better to you know shut up and step back and see what they do, and then give a little tux here and there, like okay, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, uh, and it, it depends so much on on each. Every actor comes with a very different different uh, sort of experience on the set. There are different kind of ways to become an actor and different reasons to be an actor, uh, and 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 different ways and methods of acting. And your job as a director is try to bring the best out of all of them and make it in my experience make it um you don't need to make it a, a nice experience that's not your job i mean that's i also see directors who try to be nice to everybody and that's that's not your job i mean you you have your friends back at home you don't need new friends that's not the reason you do a movie uh you want to make it a nice you know you want to make it a good working experience but it's it's not so much like you don't need to be friends with everybody uh as long as you get them to work uh for the betterment of the movie 
not of their own ego or of your own ego or of of some producer's ego or or anything like that but everything works always for the betterment of the movie and if you're able to catch that that vibe then then you probably have the, the golden ticket well it's it's that that seems like a really good segue into the talk about jeepers creepers because to start off here i just wanted to how did this come about? How did this come onto your plate? What, what were the discussions leading you into taking on the reins of what is a popular horror franchise over here in the States? How did this begin? So <clears throat> uh, there's a couple of people who are instrumental to the uh, to the production, which were uh, involved in way, way longer than I have been. And uh, um, Jake Seal and Terry Bird are two producers who've been uh, dealing with <clears throat> with the uh, Jeepers Creepers franchise for I don't even know how long, and they always had this idea that they wanted to find a way to bring some something uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, fresh to the table with that with that franchise, and it's not the easiest franchise to 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 begin with, as we know, and uh, and I was introduced it to. Uh, uh, it wasn't, I mean, it was uh, maybe 2000, and, I'm going to say 2019 or 20, no, 2019, I think I was introduced to, uh, to, to, uh, to the franchise because they were looking for uh, a director. And obviously with Iron Sky, uh, I've gained some sort of popularity uh, especially in European, sort of British and European, and and sort of the, the, this side of the world, as a director who does, you know, franchises because Iris Sky is obviously kind of a franchise, and I'm I'm sort of I, right. I know that world, and then um, because um, I think Jake liked what I've done with Iron Sky, we had a good meeting over in Berlin Film Festival, and uh, he said that. Uh, he might. He didn't tell, tell me the name of the film at that point, but he said that he might have a film I'd, he'd like me to read. And then eventually, you know, well, eventually I got the uh, got the script and 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 I got the uh, obviously understood. Ah, so this is what he was talking about. So this is, he mentioned that it was a franchise, but didn't tell me what or which one it was. But now, then he sent me the script and I started to read it. And I was like, this is actually a really nice and fresh take to a. a, a you know, to, to a, a franchise because if you want to renew the franchise in one way or another, you need to give it sort of a kind of a rebirth. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, a reboot or anything like that, but it, but it needs to have something fresh on it. And I think the script had that written all over it. And I said that, yes, I'd love to, you know, start working on this. And then, you know, bit by bit, we started to build, uh, put it together. It wasn't very, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It wasn't like snap of the uh, finger because there was just around the time we were about to, you know, get closer to things. COVID happened and nobody knew what we we're going to do with that because obviously the whole, well, the whole world went absolutely like off its, off its rails and, and film world was extremely affected by that because how can you, how can you sh shoot a 200 people crew sort of film when when there is this this dead, deadly disease that is just you don't know what to do there's no vaccination there's nothing you can do about it at that time and uh we didn't know at all how to do that but um we just started to work on it and i actually came over to louisiana and we shot uh, uh bits and pieces of it in louisiana and yeah. Then, yeah christian state yeah that's where i live yeah that's it I loved it over there a lot. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic area. And then uh, rest of it we shot in the in the United Kingdom. So, I, I when you first got this script, and the, you know, I'm going to pepper in these questions with uh, these are questions from our viewers, but oh. they they work organically here. So, like when you first got this script, were you aware was was the idea that Jonathan Breck was not going to return as the creeper or was that something that you guys wanted to do and it just didn't end up happening? We actually haven't revealed who's playing the creeper yet. So, I oh, so we don't. That's just speculation, guys. OK, that's yeah. Nick. And it's, you know, it's 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 one of those things that uh, 
everything will be re revealed in due time. But uh, but uh, yeah, there's there's some things that I cannot and, and and shouldn't be commenting on because you know we want to keep certain things uh, the lid on them and some stuff that's that's already out. So yeah, yeah. So. I guess um, then this question would be, what did you look for with a reinvention of the look of the creeper? Because we know that you guys went, it's the, the, the bones are still there, but you guys definitely put your own spin on the creeper here. What, it, what was your vision for the creeper? Well, for the creeper, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's still, like I said, we haven't really revealed too much about the, the whole creeper. Uh, but let's say that 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 uh, it's going to be a little bit of a non-answer, unfortunately. But I'm going to say that that uh, the script itself demanded the, the creeper to be a certain certain type and certain certain kind, and 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 the, and the story itself is telling a little bit of a different kind of a, uh, a approach. Uh, it approaches it from from a little bit of a different point of view. So that that required that we also wanted to work on the creeper in a way. That it's it's something that's that you haven't seen exactly in the same way on the screen, and it, it, we want it to be uh, kind of a, a renewed or reborn version of it. But but uh, I can't go too much into that. Demand. That's to that's totally fine. I you, you don't have to. Yeah. 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 Timo, let me ask you this, man. When you find out what you're reading is Jeepers Creepers, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you'd seen the movies sure. one, two, yeah. and three. Sure. And you're aware of the everything that's gone on with the mm -hmm. director and all that yeah. in the history. When you, I, I just, I gotta know, like when you read this script and you start reading into it, is there a part of you that says, "I don't know that I want to get into this kind of thing," or mm -hmm. as a director, are you like, "I, I, I want to, I gotta work. This is what I am. This is what I'm born to do. Yeah. Be a director." What's going, like, what's going through your mind with all that when you, when you, well, when, you, when it first hits you? This is Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, it was really like like that. I got the Jeepers Creepers script. Of, ah, Jeepers Creepers. All right, now I get it. And I first thing, obviously, like connecting me back to the original movies, like this is amazing, you know, great franchise. But then there's something else there, isn't there? And I was like, yes, there was something else there. And then I did a bit of research, and I said, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Now, now I remember. And obviously, my first question was that is is the original director involved in some way in this? And is is this written by him, or is this is is he some way, you know? part of the production and the first uh, and the answer came that absolutely not in in no way and that was very important for me because i i don't want to jump into something that's that's uh you know i want to start something that's that's new and i want to do it uh firstly the way that i want to do it so whoever the director would have been i wouldn't have felt uh good that there is like the original director is somewhere uh, along the way, like as a producer or something like that, and especially when it is with with a background like this, I wanted to uh, take a very clear separation from what the earlier movies have been like, and wanted to well build this on my own legs without any involvement of the original director, uh, and that was something that I uh, I was very adamant about, and that was like my first thing, and I wanted to make sure that that's that's the case. And then once that was confirmed to me that yes, this is the case that that this is a completely standalone from from you know he's he's not involved in any way in this one. Then I was more free to say okay, you know what? Then let's read and, and enjoy it. And I like I said, I I read it and enjoyed it immensely. So so that was after that it was quite an easy decision. But in the beginning, yeah, I was of course I was feeling like you know this it's it's a, it's a, it could be a bag of troubles to jump into something like that, and I don't want to work with pe people who have certain kind of backgrounds but uh, luckily that wasn't the case in this case hey we love to hear that christian and i love to hear that because as much as we both enjoy the first two films the third film we, i could do without but the first two films we really enjoy but i wanted to know and and we wanted to know that this was timo Vorinsola's jeepers creepers this yeah. is his movie this is not we we're not associating with this no. with anything from the past and that's awesome so to all of our listeners that may have had any trepidation you heard it here first from the director himself this is his movie take this on its own merits and i'm very very excited for that i'm very excited for that and i wanted to well go ahead christian i was gonna say this this, this is a massive franchise i mean the creeper 
I mean, he's a legend. It's one of the yeah. greatest horror characters of this century. I mean, uh, you know, you guys got some press, and it was e it was either Rue Morgue magazine or Horror Hound. I, I I'm a magazine guy, and I remember seeing some pictures, and I was, and I was just like, man, this, this looks like the real freaking deal, you know? Like you guys look like it looked like it just. Was this fun? Was it like when, when you make this has to be a fun movie to make, right? I mean, they always say all these directors always say making horror films is fun because everybody mm -hmm. like they just they, they have a good time. Was that the case here? Was was this a sense of just like, dude, this is was it the most fun you've ever had making a film yet? Or aside from the COVID lockdowns and restrictions, yeah. I'm sure that was a pain. But yeah, yeah, you know that that's that's one of the things. It's like it it, it threw us a weird spin to the whole thing. Is, is and I did enjoy immensely making this movie, but at the same time, it it on the day on the set, uh, it it sometimes got pretty tense because of the COVID regulations. Everybody, you know, there was always looming above this this little threat that 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 if anyone would get anybody would get uh, COVID during the production, that would be the end of it. You know, that would, they would shut it, they would shut it down right away. Like that's wow. that's how it is uh so like this this kind of uh, like a little noose around your neck all the time it brings attention to the whole thing the whole process you're working i mean we were very very uh uh clearly you know we were bubbling up in a, in in a, in a the, that we were staying in this big big old mansion and then just only traveling between this mansion and the set with the cars nobody was allowed to go Anywhere outside of that, there was nobody allowed to come in. So we tried to keep, and there was you no know, COVID tests. I think every two days, or, or sometimes every day, or something like that. So it was very, very strict on that, and it did did cause a little bit of extra stress. But at the same time, it's it's really fun. I mean, you work with a lot of fun elements, like you know, stunts with special effects, with visual effects, with with makeup, and 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 you know, crazy costumes fun characters uh all of that it's it's just absolutely uh, it's it's the thing that really <laughs> you know makes me enjoy those shooting days so it's definitely fun but again like i said it's it's not a definitely not not an easy easy trip to do especially in that point of covid i mean nowadays it's a little bit easier we have the vaccinations we have the you know people know a little you know current the omicron version is not as as, as bad version of COVID as it was back in the days in, in, when we started to shoot this, because it was really in the very beginning of the whole epidemic. Uh, so it's it's a little bit different nowadays. But when we shot cheapers, it was not it was not a, not easy. Yeah, and, and to piggyback off of that, when you're talking about working on the set and everything with everyone, the uh, marketing team had put out. They've started to you know release names of actors that are in the movie and giving little snippets of interviews. So I wanted to know now that this has been, I believe, confirmed. How was it to work with D. Wallace? We know that D. Wallace has a part in the movie, but we don't know what the part is. And I'm not going to ask you about that. But how was it to work with D. Because she yeah. is a legend. She well, I mean, she she's a legend, and she was definitely like I. I uh, uh, There's a certain character. There's actually two two characters uh, uh, who I uh, who are a little bit you know this older older couple. Uh, I'm not gonna tell too much about them, but but uh, eventually when the film comes out, you know. But uh, it, it's <laughs> I mean I that's I'm I'm very I love working with especially older actors. I love working with them because they they just come in with such an amazing experience. They are past their sort of, uh, if they ever been divas, they are not that anymore. You know, they, they are just pure experience and, and enjoyment to their craft. They don't, they, they're not always so worried about how do they look or how, do this, how does this or this or this look. They're like, let's do a great work. And, and that's exactly what I love with, with D, D was just, she was such a, you know, such a shiny, you know, you know, like a sun. I mean, you don't you don't have to sell us on D. Wallace, man. You I know, but Howling, it's, 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 yeah, she's fantastic. You know, I, I, yeah, she, she's yeah, she's great. And then then Gary Graham is the other 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 uh, uh, person who they work they work together. Just what a great great folk they were. I just love them. Does it does it ever run through your mind too, Timo? As you're working with these legends, you're working with Udo, you're working with D. Does do you ever say to yourself because like you know you're 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 I'm telling Timo when this movie comes out. I'm telling you, you you you're gonna be doing 
you're aware of these horror conventions, right? That we have yeah. in the States. You, you're yeah. going to be, you're going to be doing a lot of them suckers after this, I think. But you yeah, know, does it ever, do, do you ever have a moment where you start to say to yourself, Holy crap. Like I'm, I'm working with D freaking Wallace. Joe Dante directed this woman and I'm directing this woman. I, I've made it. Like, do you have those moments where you say to yourself, what the hell? I, I'm here. I'm doing it. Yeah. I mean, sure. It's, it's some, it's, it's, uh, it's inviting to start thinking like that, but it's, it's very counter effective. You know, there's, there's nothing, nothing to be gained from the fact that, that, uh, you know, it's, it's still, a, it's, it's a job I have to do is there's no time to, to get uh, all, no time all to be stuff. excited you got deadlines yeah. you got to get I'm, stuff I'm, done I'm, yeah. I'm excited and i always sometimes you know uh find myself sitting together where there's one of those especially those sort of quiet moments you're waiting for something to happen and, and then you're sitting there and just find yourself chatting with with let's say d wallace or just i just did a film with uh you know alec baldwin and and like, yes. like just chatting randomly about stuff and then you stop for a moment like by the way, I'm just chatting with the people who've been part of my whole uh, uh, film sort of loving life, and these people like D. Wallace uh, or 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 whoever I would occur or something like that. These are people who work with all the all the legends that basically have created uh, my my understanding and sensibilities and and sort of brought my interest in the movie. Yes, there is those those moments, but you gotta get let them go quite quickly because otherwise you'll, you'll become more starstruck yeah. <laughs> nothing well, it's, it's funny you say that because since they announced this new jeepers creepers movie last year with you as the director i really looked into you and i've admired you from afar quite a bit i like your style your visual style and your interviews you always seem very down to earth very honest very so uh, there was a big reason we wanted to get you on here but um with that it was crazy because I saw on your Instagram the other day when you were posting about um, the uh, the film you just wrapped, 97 Minutes, I believe is what it's called. Yes. I saw a picture of Alec Baldwin on set, and I'm like, good for Timo. Like, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. he, he goes from working with Udo to D to now Alec Baldwin, and it's really cool to see directors, especially like you said, it was hard being from Helsinki to break into the more mm -hmm. mainstream with that. I'm just, I want to say that's super cool. And, and, and you should every now and then take just a second to pat yourself on the back and be like, Hey, I've, I've, I've made it a little bit here. Okay. Like I'm doing what I wanted to do. So I just wanted to say that is so cool. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a nice thing to, to be able to say that. Yes, this is, this is like, it's, it's, it's a profession that I can do and, and, and I, I can enjoy it. And I know that I'm at least, relatively okay doing that and and it brings me to the most interesting uh combinations of people and it's and it's a really a it's a it's a unique thing and i'm i'm very happy happy to be able to do that because i it's not said it's not given that that happens because it's a very very complicated industry to get into and i know a lot of people who are much better filmmakers than i am but they are struggling with much sort of more complicated situation you know it, they're just struggling to get by and i i you know it's it's something that it's 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 a tricky tricky business it's a very tricky yeah. business but yeah I think, uh, and i know it, you can't really expand upon this sorry christian i didn't mean to no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, i i know you can't expand much upon this but another question we had for you is just can you give us a vague sense of will this movie at all, because the first three movies have teased this with Jeepers Creepers, will this movie at any way maybe tease some of the origins of the Creeper? Like, are we going to see any of that? Can I mean, it, whatever you can say about that, is that something you guys, let's just say, are you going, did you go into this like, this is also a character study of the Creeper in any way? <sighs> I'm really sorry. This is it's 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 weird because um, because uh, with especially with this one, there is there is so much interest towards especially this kind of questions on this one, and and I would love to talk to you about it, but I know my producers would hang me up. That I, I, I'll I, talk I to your producers. It's all right. Yeah, <laughs> but no, oh, but okay. It's, it's, you know, they they and and we all obviously want to want to you know share the information uh at a certain point and in a certain way 
but I can't. There's some stuff that I just cannot comment on this one. I feel bad about that. I'm really sorry. No, don't. It. You're don't fine. Feel bad. This, don't feel this bad. This is also, I mean, if there's people who are watching this, and I know a lot of people come to me, approach me on, on Instagram or, or, or Twitter, Tell and me they ask me, yeah. like, when are you putting out the trailer? When are you putting out the, uh, you know, release date? Uh, you know, is this and this playing this and this character in this movie? And it's like, I'm not saying nothing because, because I want to be an asshole. It's just, I cannot. I cannot talk. I'm it's just contractually. It's it's certain things yeah. that I cannot talk at this stage. And then eventually, when I can, I will talk the hell out of them. But but it's not. I don't want to be. Uh, I respect all the fans who are really excited about this. But it's right. not my call to say when when uh, certain information is spread. So unfortunately, this is one of those things. I'm say no more. Say that, no more. I yeah, no, Timo. I'm, I'm just wondering. I I I don't know if if what you just said kind of answered my question or if you just don't know. Speaking of release date, you know, Timo, I really want to see this damn movie, man. Yeah. And I'm 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 sitting my little Louisiana Cajun ass over here. I'm waiting for it, man. Like, I know, I know, and here's yeah. here's the thing, Timo. When I Google this movie, I see ratings, I see reviews, which are good, mind you. Yeah, but and I, I'm thinking I it's uh, of I'm, this movie. Yes, of Jeepers Creepers Reborn. No, I mean, no, I I don't. No, so nobody's, that, that, nobody's seen it. No. Okay, so it's fake. But okay, perfect. It's, that, it's that, something. Yeah, but but you know, it's and there's fake posters. There's fake this and this and this quite a bit. I mean, there's only the only thing that we released is is a teaser, which is like I don't know, you know, 15, 16 seconds. It looks fantastic. That teaser is awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think and, it's pretty and, good. You guys did a good job. And then uh, 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 and then there's a poster. A teaser poster but th those are the only things that have been released and some cast information a bit uh, a small you know uh kind of a bit, but everything else is just fan-made uh speculation which is not uh you know they may be great or they may be terrible or or whatever but uh, that's it's just a speculation which is not based on anything do you know though and if you can't answer this i understand but am i going to be am i going to be able to see this movie in 2022 are the people going to be able to see this movie in 2022? I would be extremely surprised if not. I mean, uh, I don't know the exact release date. I know 100%. I just asked from the producer, like, like, what's it? I know that the film is now 100% finished. So everything, all the all the technical sort of delivery details that you need to do with the movie are done. And it's been awesome. delivered to the right people. And now I think uh, if I were to guess what the status is right now, there's a... a, a, a uh, distributors are right now discussing what's the right time to put this out because obviously it's that's that's what counts the most in many cases like like the marketing needs to focus on on a certain time and then you need to pick the exact right time you can't just put the film out anytime like spring you know creeper. Mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> because the thing is you put it out in the wrong time and there happens to be like a huge film that is just you know, smothering it. I mean, whatever this is, this not this is not a uh, studio tentpole picture. This is this is still we're talking of a of a, of a of a smaller budget than you know. It's not a hundred million dollar picture. So the marketing needs to be very specified and uh, focused on a very special time. So I guess right now they are just trying to figure out what's the right time. And well, I, that makes I sense. Don't want to say anything yeah. to you guys? I, I mean, I know they know exactly what they're doing because I'm. Very and we bad. we weren't going to ask you when exactly. it was coming out. I yeah, it's coming out right now. But what can I? Yeah, do? and I just have a few more questions for you. I yeah. want to ask you, as the director, I'm assuming you've probably seen at least an assembly cut of the film, right? Like. Yeah. Are you are you happy with what came out? You know, are you like are you excited for people to see this movie? Like, I am excited for people to see this movie. I like that's 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 a very uh, uh, that that's a question which that there can be only one answer to this question, and the answer is that I've I freaking love doing this movie, and I can't wait for you guys to see that movie. But I don't want to be commenting on any. Oh yeah, any no. That's totally fine. I, I'm just I'm I'm so excited. That's that's I'm I'm restless. I just want to get this out for you guys because I think you're gonna like it. But but it's it's uh, that, but that's it's a bit it's fr sometimes it's frustrating to sit, especially when you know that the movie is not done, uh, to to wait around for the right time. But that's the right decision we have to make. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited to get this out there. Very excited. And that that's great to hear the passion behind that lets me know that i, I i'm gonna like this movie i already know i am i've already made my mind up i'm excited for it but i i want to know 
Are there any, was there any specific films or references to the genre while making this that really inspired you? Like, was there a director or a specific film that you were like, I want to nail this tone. I want to nail this look. Um, look was, um, I don't know. I, I found myself watching, uh, a couple of movies. Like, like I was watching predator quite a lot. Oh. Yes. Uh, and this doesn't have anything to do with the story or, or, yeah. or anything. It's just like I wanted to there, there was something about that 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 vibe that I wanted to go into there, like this sort of like I mean the creeper is a predator, you know. It, it's it like is predator and, it, and it's not like completely out of out of question that uh you know, and, and it's for sure. I'm I mean it's it's <laughs> that film has been watched by a lot of people who are working on, on this franchise before. But uh, I, I went back to that and watched a couple of times, sort of re refreshed my memory on how they did that and, and what kind of decisions they make and what kind of sort of things they made. Uh, another films that I liked, uh, which we watched, was um, it was a Spielberg movie. I can't remember the name right now. It's this, this old movie where they're just driving this big truck, whatever that is called. It's a great movie. Well, it's Spielberg, so I, I like the sound of that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's oh, it's came out. I'm, I know the movie. It came out before yeah. Jaws. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a fantastic movie. I I went back to that. I, I like that. It's like there's certain tension in these movies that 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 I I just uh, wanted to somehow find out like how 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 they did that as a reference. But but as a reference, like it's it's um, but I watched all kind of horror movies for. For the reference, obviously, and I'm, you know, I'm already very familiar with basically uh, the whole genre. But, but I went to went back to some of the some of the classics. It can be anything, like you know, the, the Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, whatever that kind of stuff, just to see how do you build those. And and then also the question is, uh, I wanted to make it a modern movie. I didn't want to make it a, a pastiche of '80s movies or '90s movies. Like I wanted to bring in uh, some of the elements of of today's world and sort of you know 2020s kind of filmmaking uh, style so i did watch uh, uh you sort of watch and sort of uh absorbed quite a lot of uh more modern modern horror movies also obviously with uh, uh you know the new it movies and then obviously the uh whatever that is the quiet place and all that kind of stuff which is which are the the, the big names of the 2020s horror stuff and it's just a it's it's, it's all of those things it's, it's good to watch and sort of take in something it's it's very hard to say what do you take from them you get certain certain thing and then but you only know it when you're on the set like okay this is this is the 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 the, the style that is going to start start turning out and uh, yeah 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 timo ahead, you uh you talk earlier i got one question from one of my patrons that i wanted to ask it's a random question but God bless it. I'll, I'll ask it. You talked earlier about loving, you know, vintage cinema, your 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff. One viewer, as random as this is, one viewer wanted to know if you are a fan of Andy Sidaris films. And I'm 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 asking. Give me a second. Uh who? Andy Sidar Savage Beach, uh Guns, Two Minute uh, Warning, you know, those kind of sleazy kind of movies. Are you I into would say I I am um, I, I have to say I, I I'm not, it's a bit of a disappointment. <laughs> I, I cannot say that I know I've seen those movies. I may be a fan of them, but maybe I'll have just, to a, just a random question. Bear Witch yeah, project, I mean, kind of sleazy, kind of sexual, like you know, low budget action <laughs> horror stuff. Well, no, I I I never probably watched those specific things, but uh what Let's talk real quick. Give me you. You said you grew up. You said you grew up loving these films. Like, give me what. What. What is your. What is your horror film? What that is that? Was it? my next question. Your favorite <laughs> horror films? Well, I mean, it's it's very very clearly. It's actually uh, uh, the Dracula movies with uh, uh, with uh, Christopher Lee. That's God the, bless the, you, Hammer. It's it's something that I watched. Uh, that's how I started. It, it was my friend friend's uncle had these uh, VHS cassettes of these these movies hidden away in his apartment and whenever he was away we sneaked in and we watched uh some of that stuff and and, and we were way too young for that and you know we were eight or nine years old or something like that and it just it made an an, an uh you know everlasting effect on on me like it's just I, I can still remember how it felt like when we were hiding behind a couch watching us you know uh, christopher lee approaches to that 
and has this, you know, reveals the teeth and just like just oh, gets me chill still. Like, like that's that's how you do a that's how you do a great 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 horror movie. And then of course after that I've I've seen I've seen it all. I've seen all the uh, all the Jasons and I've seen seen all that. I think I think one of the things like if if I talk like I think Hellraiser is one that I. Uh, for some reason, always admired the most of all the sort of franchise horror movies. Hellraiser is the one that I come back to many times, and uh, I just find it to be, you know, just the real deal. Yeah, that's that's really, good. Yeah, that's good taste. That's good taste. Yeah. Well, Timo, I wanted to ask you well one more thing, and you don't have to expand upon this at all. I just wanted mm -hmm. to know generally, in your opinion. If they wanted you back to do another Jeepers film, would you do it? It's a very complicated question, uh, <laughs> to which I'm going to give a very simple answer, and the answer is yes. Uh, all I'm, right. That's great to hear that, because he, he, I know they initially he, had announced it as a new trilogy you know, last he, year, and I, obviously I'm sure they're waiting to see how this one does and how it's received, well, but if we like this movie like I think I'm going to, I would hope that, and, and it does well, that they would want to bring you back. So we're, yeah. our hats are in the ring for you. We'll just, we'll say that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, yeah. Timo, la last thing for me, man. What What is your dream project? What is the, what is something you, like, you got to do? Like, you just, like, before you put a, a bow on your career, is there mm -hmm. anything that you just, like, I, I've got to make this. Is there a script that you've done or is there anything that you're just a massive fan of? Like, I want to put my stamp on that. Um, yeah, right now there is a script uh, that, that I'm, I'm very excited about uh, pushing forward, but let's, let's see how that, but, but as in a, in a, in a sort of a bigger picture, um, I don't know why I almost wanted to direct the Star Trek movie, but I don't know. It's it's a it's a long, long stretch. But uh, I'm, I'm a big Trek fan, and I'd I'd love to direct a Star Trek movie one day, like a like a big sort of you know official proper Star Trek movie. I'd like, like to it. I'd like to see that. You have a yeah. you have a nice visual eye. You have a good style with those effects. I I'd like to see that. I, I'd yeah. watch that. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that, but. So does a lot of other directors. So yeah. <laughs> well, then the 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 last bullshit question I'll throw out, just because I want to know for my yeah. sake, and and this is this is where we'll cap it, guys. But Timo, out of these three, who's the king? Michael, Freddie, or Jason? Um. Funnily enough, I I say I said Jason. Jason to oh. me is the one. It's really, uh, and it has a lot to do. Uh, uh, with uh, films that I watched, but I was I was super terrified, especially by Jason when I was a kid, uh, and especially the, the the Jason with the with the with the mask. I think he came in the uh, uh, was he already in the second or third one? Part three is when he got three, yeah, yeah, and and just oh my god, I I was it, it came in the wrong time in my life. I was way too young <laughs> to experience that, but. But I was so so scared, and obviously I love Freddie, I love uh, uh, Michael as well. But Jason is the one. It's all well, you gave the right answer for this podcast because Christian is a Freddie guy. I'm a Michael guy, so you picked the one that neither one of us could say. Ha! I told you I was right. right so yeah. hey, good answer. <laughs> all right, good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. Team Timo, thank you for coming on our show, and then yeah, man, and uh, answering our questions and being a cool guy and all that good stuff, man. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, it's nice that we managed to make this work, even though we yes. are very far apart uh, around the world. But uh, it's the magic of internet. That's yes. Right. And I just want to say to all of our listeners, guys, Timo was a joy to interview. Very, very open, very honest, very talkative. Really appreciated everything you gave to us. And to anybody that might have been on the fence about you know another jeepers creepers movie the passion that this guy has for this project it has shown through in this interview i'm very confident that he put his best foot forward in this movie and i hope that because i know christian and i are going to be there probably damn day one when this movie day one, comes out. I'm big fans but yeah yes but i would just everybody listening support this movie when it comes out follow timo on um on twitter and uh instagram and uh follow the jeepers creepers reborn pages to stay up to date with more news 
Timo, seriously, it was it was a pleasure. Thank you for taking an hour out of your Sunday evening to talk Absolutely. to two Absolutely. nerdy horror guys about uh, yeah. about a movie yeah, we're excited it was, it was for. It was a good ple big pleasure. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, best of luck with you guys, uh, everything, uh, and uh, thanks for having me on the podcast. Thank That's you right. so much, Timo. All right, Christian. This has been a production of the You Need a Horror podcast. You need it, we got it. Thank you for listening.